Howdy, homies. You expressed to me that you wanted to see how to animate the floating element shadow effect that we made in the last video. I am more than happy to accommodate that request. I almost created my jeans when you guys asked me to do that. Oh my god. Okay, this is the finished product of the animation that you'll be learning how to program today. And keep in mind that it'll be a little bit smoother and cleaner on your website and your local machine when you test. It might only appear choppy because of my video's low frame rate. But trust me, when you run it on your machine, you'll see it's smooth as glass. It's buttery. Now just so everyone can see the simplicity of the CSS3 animation programming workflow, we're going to place our still elements on the page first like normal, like we would normally put anything on a web page. Then we'll set about animating them. Okay, first, let's discuss what we're starting out with here. We're starting out with basically what we ended off with in the last video when we created the shadow effect under the element on our page that we wanted to. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. So I have my head floating in the page there and really to make it appear floating I've placed an oval shadow effect under it. And you can see nothing's animated yet and everything is just sitting there still. So this is how you would normally put things on a web page. So you can see I have my container. I call it bot container and inside I have the bot div and the bot shadow div. The bot div is the one where my head is. Now let's take a look at the CSS for that. And we have the bot container. I'll show you a, a border on this container and you can see what it looks like. Let's make it red, one pixel, and dashed. Let me render that in the browser so you can see the border around that element. It has 285 width, 420 height, margin of zero pixel auto to center it in the browser window. That's zero pixels top and bottom margin and auto for the left and right margins. That's how it centers. And you can see that I just put that border around it. So I'm going to take that border back off. I just wanted you guys to see the exact location of that div. Now this time we're having the, the bot, instead of having the video like we had in the last code, we had an iframe, an actual YouTube video here, and we were placing a shadow under it. But this time we're just going to put a div here and we're going to make its background image equal to my big face. And you can put anything you want there. And I just named it bot so you can throw anything that you want in that place. So just keep in mind that this element can be anything you want. It can be a video. As long as you put your iframe inside of this div, your video will float on the page. And then just remove the background property. But I have a background property because I want to float an image around. And I could actually stick an image tag within this div and have the same effect if I put the atom.png image tag right in this div. But you can just use a background image for the div itself and that will put the image there. So I made the div have the same dimensions as my image. And I set its top property to zero pixels and I made sure to give it a position of relative for animating purposes. So I give it a position of relative or absolute when I want to animate something. Okay, so it's pretty important to keep in mind that you might see that your animations don't work if your elements, in some cases, if your elements aren't relative or absolutely positioned. So make sure you set your positioning to relative or absolute for any elements that you want to animate. So I'm going to animate this bot and the bot shadow. You can see both of them are set to position relative. Now the bot shadow is set up the same way we set it up in the last video except that now I added opacity to make it really transparent when the animation begins and I'm going to darken it up as the animation proceeds. I'm also going to make it wider. So that's why I set the margin space. So I set the margin space everything to zero because I'm going to shrink it and expand it as the animation runs. And then the top property for that is 100 pixels. And since it's relative positioning, that means it's going to be 100 pixels under the bot. That's where it's going to start. And all of that gives you this, okay? Now let's set out animating it. And we're going to use keyframe animations. If you guys go to developphp.com, you'll see in the CSS library that I have CSS3 property references. And you can find out all about the keyframe animations. If you want to learn more in depth about how to program keyframe animations and also transition animations. And now I've been doing a lot of videos about how to trigger all these animations using JavaScript and stuff like that. 
but this one we're not going to use any JavaScript and all you have to do is create an infinite animation a keyframe animation that runs infinitely so when you have animations that you just want to run on their own you can use keyframe animations and when you want animations that are user initiated user interactive that's when you use transitions and you trigger those uh, CSS3 transitions using JavaScript so that's how it all works but since we're just going to have uh, an animation that's not user initiated it's just going to be running on its own I'm going to use keyframe animation and I'm using keyframe animation also because it's going to be an infinite loop it's just going to keep running the animation alright so I'm going to add the keyframe animations for making the bot float and I'm using the webkit prefix and towards the end of the video I'm going to talk to you guys about how to make it run in all browsers and not just webkit based browsers and in the future we can remove all prefixes and just run keyframes like that without any prefixes but for now we have to use prefixes and it's not so difficult I'll show you how simple it is to add prefixes to make it run in all the browsers now what we're doing here is we're setting a keyframe animation called bot float and you can name that whatever you want and this animation only has two keyframes and I set it to 50% and 100% and if you go check out the information of develop PHP, you can see that you can use to and from instead of these numbers here. So you can use to and from if you're only going to have two keyframes in your animation. Or you can use 50%, 100%. And that will allow you to have to and from animation logic. So you're animating to top 100 pixels from top 0. So basically this animation is set up to animate that that bot from its top position 0 where it starts to top position 100 and then back and that's all it does so now in order to tie this keyframe animation that you set up to this element here we just put reference to it in the element as webkit animation so we're using the animation property and like I said in the future we can remove all prefixes and we'll just have it like that but for now we'll use a prefix the animation property is set as such we specify bot float animation which is our keyframe animation here so we specify that to run and we're going to use ease instead of linear you can have linear here you can have ease in ease out ease in out or just ease and I thought in this case it would be best to use ease the animation is going to take place over two seconds infinitely so this is like your speed two seconds and it's going to loop it's going to be infinite the animation will run infinitely and you can set a number here if you want so if I put two right here well let me put three right there you'll see that the head goes up and down one two three and then it stops but I want it to be infinite now if I run this in my browser it'll just keep going and going and going it'll never stop now what if I wanted to have 10 keyframes in here. I could just put 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, all the way to 100%, and that will give me 10 keyframes. And I can move that element around on the page anywhere I want in any directions. Okay, let's take a quick look at this again. Now, to make this look a little more realistic, we're going to take the oval or the elliptic shadow effect that we made in the last video that was just a still shadow. And we're going to animate to correspond with this head that's bobbing up and down on the page. So under the shadow div, I'm going to put another rule that is the keyframe animations for shadow react. So we have another keyframe animation set up here and it also has two keyframes. Now let's go ahead and tie that keyframe animation to that element bot shadow. So you can see we're tying shadow react to this element and shadow react is our keyframe animation that we established here we're setting that to ease two seconds infinite as well and what we're doing inside of that animation is we're taking it from its normal margin space of zero pixels and we're changing that to margin space of 20 percent so basically it'll take it from being wide to being a more narrow shadow a smaller little ellipse because it's pushing in the margin space left and right so margin property works like this. You have top, right, bottom, left. So right and left, you can see, are both set to 20%. And the opacity is going to rise. 
So we can make the opacity 0.7. That way the little shadow gets darker when the, when the big head gets closer to the ground. And that's why in the div when it starts out for bot shadow, we have it set to a 0.1 opacity. So it's barely just visible. And then when the animation begins, we're going to make it go from barely just visible to more visible and darker. So the other side of your animation, the second keyframe, brings it back to its normal state. So you're pretty much going from its normal state to whatever state that you want to make it go to in the animation. So let's check out what we have now. You see? Now we have a little bit more realistic effect to that shadow that's under our floating element. And that's the kind of logic that you would want if there was lighting coming from above. So say this was a sunny day or whatever, or there was lighting above this head. This little circle down here would get darker as the head approaches the base or the floor. And as the head rises up into the sky, this shadow would get lighter, it would start to fade out, and it would get much wider. Now let's talk about these stupid prefixes. Now in the future, like I said, you'll be able to run these animations like this without this WebKit prefix here and here. It'll look just like that. And it'll work in all browsers, software, and all environments. But for now, we have to use the prefix. Let me just show you what I mean. Let's go and preview this in Firefox. I've been using Chrome to preview my work. You can see in Firefox, I get no animation. I just get the still elements. All I have to do is change WebKit to Mose, and you'll see that that works in Firefox. But you really want to have all of them there. You don't really want to just replace them. Now let me file, preview in Firefox. You'll see now my animation runs in Firefox, but it's not going to run in Chrome. Let me run it in Chrome now. Now it's not running in Chrome because I removed the WebKit prefix. Now what if I change this Mose to MS? Let's change Mose to MS, MS, MS. Now let's run this in Internet Explorer. So you can see we get the animation that we want in Internet Explorer as well, as long as we use that MS prefix. But now if we file preview in Firefox, it's not going to be working anymore because we removed the Mose prefix. So what do you do? Add all three. And then after that, you add the standardized syntax. And I'll show you what that looks like right now. Okay, so you can see for each element that I want to animate, I just have to specify the animation that I want to run, the keyframe animation I specify using prefix. WebKit, Mose, MS, and then the standardized syntax under those. And the same for the actual keyframe animation itself. You have to set the WebKit, Mose, MS, and then the keyframes syntax standardized format after that. And I did the same for the bot shadow. I added the prefixes. So basically you can develop in whatever uh, browser you like, whatever's your favorite. If you like working in Firefox best, you can create your animations and develop and everything using the Mose prefix. Then when you get done and you're ready to release it to the public, just add the WebKit, MS, and other prefixes. And just make sure you put the standardized syntax in the bottom because in the future, that's what's going to be used. So let's file, preview in browser, Chrome. Make sure we save it, yes. Okay, we have animation, preview in browser, Firefox. Looking good. Preview in browser, Internet Explorer. Looks good in IE. And let's also preview it in Safari. And I'm not going to add the Opera prefix because Opera is a little buggy. I don't like the Opera browser anyway. I hope it dies. There's enough browsers that we have to mess with. And this should also work on mobile device browsers for Apple devices and Android devices. Let's take one more look at the finished product. All right. I hope you guys have enjoyed this CSS3 keyframes animation programming lesson. And remember, keyframe animations, you don't have to have just two keyframes in your animations. You can have 10 keyframes if you want, 20 keyframes, to where this head could start over here on the page and smoothly animate over here, 
and then animate down to this corner, then to this corner, and then back to its original spot. As long as you set up four keyframes, you get it? The first keyframe will bring it from here to here. The second keyframe brings it here to here. The third keyframe brings it from here to here. And then the fourth keyframe brings it from here back to its original position. And you can loop that infinitely. Infinite loop. Or you can just run it one, two times, away, however many times you want. It. Okay, okay, okay. And remember, you can check the uh, uh, information for animation, keyframe property animations, and all that stuff at CSS3 information at the uh, develop PHP library and I have a lot of examples there and also have examples for the transition property programming and remember keyframe animations and transition animations in CSS3 are two different things you use keyframe animations when you want animations to run on their own and when you want user initiated animations you can use transition property instead of animation property and you trigger your transition property using JavaScript. So you basically just use JavaScript as the trigger mechanism to make CSS3 transitions run when you want it to be user interactive.